Sharpening plane irons and chisels can seem intimidating. Even the most experienced woodworkers have trouble getting consistent results sharpening freehand. We've come up with a method that allows anyone to get a razor edge repeatedly. The key to a good edge is consistency. Using a honing guide gives anyone the ability to repeat an angle and get a consistent result repeatedly. There are several tools you'll need to work with our method. A side clamping honing guide to hold the blade, a 1,000 and an 8,000 grit water stone or the equivalent. We recommend water stones because they're efficient to work with and easy to keep flat. Flattening can be done with a coarse grit wet dry sandpaper of 120 to 220 grit or a coarse diamond plate. A six inch ruler, 20 thousandths or less in thickness, will allow you to put a slight back bevel on the blade, which we'll speak of later. A protractor allows you to determine the projection distance for specific angles. A sharp edge is the intersection of two polished surfaces, meaning you must work both the bevel edge and the back of the blade. Our blades come lapped flat and square to the edge, essentially ready to use out of the box. Other blades, especially older ones, may require quite a bit of work to get to this point. Preparing the back of one of our blades does not have to be an arduous process. David Charlesworth came up with an idea he calls the ruler trick. This is simply taking a thin metal ruler, about 20 thousandths or less, sticking it down to an 8,000 grit stone with the suction of the water on the stone, and then working off the opposite side of the stone with the back down, and even pressure in the center of the blade. Don't come more than half an inch onto the stone, and work on and off the edge, traversing the length of the stone to spread out where? Approximately 10 to 20 passes on and off the edge should give you a back bevel and mirror polish on the back of the blade right at the tip. When that runs corner to corner, you're ready for the next step. To achieve that same level of polish in a traditional manner, you would be lapping the entire back of the blade on an 8,000 grit stone, and a blade of this size would take literally two to three hours to get the same level of polish we achieved in 10 to 20 strokes. It is important that you don't use the ruler trick on chisels. A chisel is used for paring, meaning even a slight back bevel will affect how the tool cuts. Because it's such a small back bevel, and isolated to the tip, the back bevel from the ruler trick does not affect any plain iron. We can achieve the same speed and level of polish on the bevel edge using a secondary bevel. The blade has a 25 degree primary bevel. By working a secondary bevel right at the tip of the blade, you're not required to work the entire face of that bevel saving time and effort. You may use several different secondary bevels. The most commonly used angle is going to be 30 degrees. The sharpening angle is determined by the projection distance, which is the measurement from the tip of the blade to the front of the jig. That measurement will be different for different angles. We've provided the measurements for five commonly used angles, 25 degrees, 30, 35, 40, and 45 degrees. You can find those measurements in a sharpening instruction pamphlet that can be downloaded from our website. If you're going to be using a different style of jig that may require different measurements for, those, for projection distances, or you simply want some different angles than the ones we've provided, Set a protractor for the angle you like. Hook that protractor off the bottom of a parallel surface like this plywood 
which creates a fixed angle. The blade should shift in your jig, but still hold position. Slip into that corner created, and when it intersects with the arm of the protractor, you've determined the projection distance for that angle. You'll find that if you measure these angles every time for sharpening, that you never get the same angle twice. It's a really good idea to make some stops for each different angle that you're going to be working with. Once you've determined the angle, either with a measurement or with the protractor, make a stop for that distance. The next time you want to sharpen a blade, you drop it into your jig, go to your stop, and you're going to be getting the same angle that you got the first time. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's exactly 30 degrees, and that's okay. If it's 31 degrees or 29 degrees, that's, a, that's not a problem. The th important thing is that you're reproducing the angle you had the first time you sharpened that blade off that stop. Set your distance. Tighten down the jig so that it does, the blade will not shift. Then with a little spritz of water on the stone, four passes on the 1,000 grit stone should give you a burr or a wire edge on the back of the blade. This burr is an indicator that you've brought fresh metal to your edge. You know if you can feel a burr all the way along that when you hone on the 8,000 grit stone that you've got that edge as sharp as it can be. Wipe down the wheel and the blade before you switch to the honing stone, the 8,000 grit. Another spritz. And again, with even pressure out of the tip of the blade, four to five passes on the pull stroke will give you a bright, polished edge as sharp as it can be. Remove the blade from the jig and we go back to the ruler trick. This time we only need to do four to five passes off that edge. We'll remove any burr or wire edge that remains and maintain the polish that we achieved at the beginning. Now we have a beautifully sharp edge ready for use. Wipe down the blade with a rag with camellia oil to help keep things from rusting since we've been working around water. It's also a very good habit to form to dress your stones after every use. This ensures that you have a flat stone and a consistent result every time you use them.